In this episode, we're going to be addressing the noise and vibration that's coming from the drive shaft. I call Jeff's Bronco Graveyard because they have replacement slip yokes for the drive shaft. So this thing has an add a leaf on it. Since the rear end is lifted slightly, I'm worried that the slip yoke won't have enough engagement. Basically, I jacked it up by the rear end and supported it as high as I could get it on uh, these jack stands. I'm measuring the drive shaft in the worst case scenario so that I don't have to worry about it anymore. When I called Bronco Graveyard, they said you need at least three quarters of an inch of engagement. Which to me seemed way too small, but at least I had a reference point. At worst case scenario, you can see that the splines are exposed about 7 sixteenths of an inch. I also wasn't able to get the suspension to completely hang, so just to be safe, let's say 9 sixteenths when the suspension is entirely suspended. When you remove the slip yoke and measure the full length of the splines on the stub shaft, you get really close to 3 and 7 sixteenths. So you take 3 and 7 sixteenths minus 9 sixteenths, you get 2 and 7 eighths, which is a lot more than what Bronco Graveyard's was saying. And I think it's acceptable, but yeah, I definitely think that the three quarter measurement they gave me was way too low. So if you get that, I would say that that's not good. Yeah, and they said this piece was uh, not hardened. You can see that it was damaged here. There you go, a little bit. And I also found this piece right here inside there. It's kind of a rubbery thing. I'm not sure what that is. It's a little concerning. Um, yeah, like I said, this piece right here was kind of banged up. And then to the, to the right there, it looks a little more tapered. Sort of like it'd been kind of wearing and turning that way. I think that's the way it turns. Uh, another side's more straight up. Um, I also want to install it and uh, just reinstall this and show you guys um, how much play it had and then I'll compare that to the new part that I get. Alright, so I wanted to get this set up with the dial indicator. I got her set at about zero. And then you go down, that's one hundred thousandths. Oops, get her back at top. Go down, that's one hundred thousandths. And you can push her down back to right around 200 thousandths. That's the total play up and down of this guy. Which hopefully is fixed with a new slip yoke. One thing I'm not sure of is uh, the orientation of this and this guy because you know there's I think there's 16 splines in this, 18 maybe? Anyways, um, you can orient it, orientate it many ways and there's a weight on here so I'm a little bit worried about that. Um, I'll ask those guys at Graveyard Broncos about that when I order the new slip yoke. Alright, so this is the new slip yoke. It's actually one from like a 250 or a 350. Um, the guy swapped it. Initially I ordered the wrong one. So this Bronco was set up for a 1350 series um, Spicer slip yoke and really whole driveline setup. Um, the U joints are also 1350 series. The uh, Bronco stock, I believe, came with the 1330 series, slip yoke, U-joint, whole setup. Um, I have the part numbers and more information in the description if you're following along. I'm not going to use the impact to get these in, just because I do not want to break anything. Now you could do this with a hammer too, a hammer and a socket, but I'm not doing it that way. Okay, so when I do this, I'm gonna kind of try to hold the um, hold the joint in the middle because I don't want it to accidentally, you know, get off of line with the um, needle bearings.
Might be able to get a clip in there. I'm gonna do the other side and then we'll try to get clips in. Yeah, that feels tight now. Okay, so this U joint was kind of bound up. And so basically, I hit it with a hammer. And that took care of the problem. And now it's very loosey goosey. And I'm um, going to install all these guys. Yep, and the retainer clips in there. Loosey goosey. Okay, so I realized I installed this not in the orientation that I wanted in. Um, I want the uh, zerk to go on this side instead of the, instead of the back side. So that's kind of a bummer. Same process. I'm just going to redo it. Here's some bonus footage on how to remove a U joint. Here you can see me install the flange yoke, which is the same process as the slip yoke. Now that everything's good and uh, installed, I can install my greet zerk. All right, the instructions say, after installation and prior to placing into service, re-lube the Zerg, in ensuring that small but equal amount of grease is purged from each bearing assembly. So a small amount of grease purged out of each of these. Feeling it, it's loose and free. So that means we can go ahead and install it. Also, for this guy, you're supposed to run a special grease, um, a special Ford Teflon based grease. Um, but for right now, I'm just gonna use the red and tacky stuff that I use. This stuff right here, I've been using for everything. The Teflon stuff that Ford has is super low friction and apparently it's supposed to help with the, the slip yoke clunk. Um, I do plan on running the Ford PTFE lubricant, but I didn't have it at the time so I will apply it in the future. All right, so I found some problems. So basically there's a few types of seals There's one, uh, for these types of uh, setups. There's one, there's a friction fit one um, from Bronco Graveyards um, that I kind of want to order just that piece from them if possible. Basically it's a one piece cap, it's metal, and it has like a, a some kind of a rubbery type of gasket um, that presses on. It actually has a grease zerk right on that, so it greases it from that end, which is seems pretty good to me. But this style here is a three piece, and it comes with show you right here. It comes with a foam piece 
and on the schematic they gave me, um, there's a p this metal piece goes on uh, first, and then the foam piece, and then this this cap that screws on the threads here. And the problem is, um, I had this all together uh, before, but you basically get the same idea without it. So when I go to install this, another thing. When I go to install this, and if you screw that on, you can't really screw it on because just at resting position, so you can see just at resting position, the splines are right here, and the uh, the, the washer and the um, that foam piece, or I guess the cork piece, looks like it's cork, um, aren't meant to go past these splines. So for some reason, um, you know, I like hit a bump or something and the suspension goes up, this will slide out and that'll be a problem because it won't have anywhere to go and it will stop on those things. And so I'm gonna try to get that one piece, one that fits over this. However, I'm still a little worried that this is too short. Um, so yeah, anybody has any comments on that, let me know. Um, right now um, let's see let's let me also show you guys that this here is supposed to be parallel with this other side right here kind of hard to see this got kind of close but basically they're parallel and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick on these um, pieces on um, like the flat piece here here excuse me um, an angle gauge just to make sure they're in phase with each other because they have to be the same orientation it's very important so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so when I measured the transmission side, that file got corrupted, but basically you just attach the angle finder like this on both ends and make sure it's the same angle. Here's the moment you've been waiting for. I got her at zero, and she swings all the way back around 100 thousandths, and stops about 125. I didn't realize it at the time because I didn't have a good reference point, but this is still really bad. I did take it out for a test drive. It was vibrating a lot back there. Um, and so I just didn't feel comfortable driving with it. I didn't think it was fixed. Um, also the fact that there was no weight on the slip yoke to balance it. Um, it wasn't properly balanced shaft. I thought about it and I called the drive shaft shop. They, you know, they told me my cardin was actually bad as well, which I didn't realize. Um, I wasn't sure to check that even, um, but I ended up going with them. It cost a little bit more to get the heavy duty style shaft rebuilt than it did um, a brand new uh, 1330 series um, like the Bronco originally had. You can get those on Amazon for a pretty reasonable price. Here I will show you the measurements on the new shaft for reference. All right, so here's the dry shaft I made. Um, turned out pretty good. The one thing I'm disappointed in is the fact that they um, they painted over this boot. So the black is difficult to get on camera, but basically there's clips holding this rubber boot on, and this thing can expand in between these ribs. Um, so I actually had them make it th three eighths of an inch longer because I might lift it in the future, um, which I think is cool. And also I have I think I have plenty of play. So it has about tw 25, maybe a hair more, maybe 30. You can push a little past zero there. 25 to 30 thousandths inches of play in this slip joint. Here the lessons learned are, I think, at least for me, is that it's not worth it to mess with drive shafts. Um, there's a lot of things out there that you can mess with, but drive shafts, um, you know, you might be able to find a good place to do deal with drive shafts, but, um, you know, whether you're tra swapping a transmission or doing something where you need to change the length of your drive shaft. It's not worth it, especially for me, because one of the big benefits of this truck was that it has a ZF transmission, which is a heavy duty um, transmission. And it also has a Detroit locker. And both those things are gonna be affected by um, excessive vibration in the drive shaft. So I definitely wanna get it right. In episode 40 of Roadkill, they also try to do a DIY drive shaft and it ends up completely destroying the tail housing of their transmission. 
So it's not something you really want to mess around with. Um, unfortunately, there still is some vibration in the rear end. Um, I know it's on the drive shaft now, but the rear end still has some issues, so that's something we're going to have to address in the future. Um, it's one of my big priorities because that's going to ripple to um, this expensive drive shaft that I just had built. Thanks for watching.